USA Admiralty Courts have enslaved you and how to escape. Welcome to Truth Duel Official. In this video, you'll learn about the Uniform Commercial Code, the Sovereign Citizen Movement, and how a cattle rancher almost went to war against the United States. You'll want to stick around till the end of this video to learn how to avoid owing the Bureau of Land Management $1 million in fees. But first, I am your host, Misinformation. If you like this channel, make sure to subscribe to receive more great conspiracy theories, misinformation analysis, and other sentiments and ramblings that please and amuse us. And become a truth dueler, because only you can slay misinformation at its source. Get our app on truthduel.com. Freedom, liberty, independence. These are things that Americans hold dear. However, some Americans hold them more dear than others. So dear, in fact, that they refuse to let American law rule them. Rather, they believe that foreign powers have compromised the American law, but there's a key to unlocking the true American law hidden between all the legalese. Introducing the Uniform Commercial Code, the key to freeing yourself from bureaucratic red tape. But is such a thing too good to be true? Long story short, we hear a story too good to be true. For all of you non-legal eagles out there, let's break down the Uniform Commercial Code into something digestible. The basis of the UCC is that all that legal jargon that floods our court system is purposeful. It's designed to screw over the average citizen using sophistry they can't understand. While it has a kernel of truth, just like all good conspiracy theories, the UCC theory takes that kernel of truth and grows a whole cornfield of dark, shadowy governments to pull at our puppet strings. Come down today and try some corn or we will sacrifice your newborn. The story begins in 1938 with the Erie Railroad Company versus Tompkins Supreme Court case. Allegedly, the American government gave secret information to legal personnel involved in the case. Supposedly, those personnel were told that foreign creditors owned the bankrupt United States government. Because of this, the American courts were now to operate under an admiralty jurisdiction instead of common law. Due to the shady nature of this conspiracy, those foreign powers aren't named. However, our Truth Duel investigative report Reporters have a hunch that the Puppet Master is the scariest, most evil dictator this world has ever seen. There are three different jurisdictions specifically defined in the US Constitution that can try you. Don't start snoring just yet, these are a lot of esoteric words, so let's define them to make things more interesting. Number one, common law is the most libertarian interpretation of law. It states that you can do anything your little heart desires, so long as it doesn't infringe on the life liberty or property of someone else. These are the courts of the people in which you have a right to an impartial jury of your peers. None other than the Magna Carta set this precedent in the West in 1215 CE. Unfortunately, very few common law courts remain in the United States, yet it is in these courts only that we should expect due process with respect to our constitutional rights. Number 2. Equity courts. These courts hear issues arising from contract disputes. Number three, admiralty law or maritime law. You would expect that these courts would hear cases pertaining to merchants on the sea. Therefore, to be tried in this court, there would need to be a valid international contract. Yet, this is the, quote, 
statutory jurisdiction, end quote, that most often tries American citizens. Because, of course, you were driving your car in international waters when Officer Friendly cited you for speeding in your Toyota Prius and confiscated your devil's lettuce for himself. More simply, common law won't make you buckle your seatbelt, but admiralty law will. To be tried under common law, or God's law, the prosecution would have to produce the injured party. But if you make it safely to your destination and still receive a ticket for failing to buckle up, a hidden compelled performance clause has cited you in an implied international contract. This is where the Uniform Commercial Code comes into play. Truth Duel investigative reporters provide this information as is and without warranties of any kind either express or implied. Please seek legal advice from an attorney, preferably one who, you know, actually graduated from law school. So-called sovereign citizens have spun a compelling yarn with this one, and even we are not sure whom to believe. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Within the Uniform Commercial Code, there's a section entitled Performance or Acceptance Under Reservation of Rights. By reserving your common law rights under UCC 1308, you can pull a sneaky on the American justice system. It reads as follows. A party that with explicit reservation of rights performs or promises performance or assents to performance in a manner demanded or offered by the other party does not thereby prejudice the rights reserved. Such words as without prejudice or under protest or the like are sufficient. When signing a ticket or the back of your driver's license or some other government contract of the like involving Federal Reserve notes, you can use without prejudice UCC 1308 or something like I reserve my right not to be compelled to perform under any contract, commercial agreement or bankruptcy that I did not enter knowingly, voluntarily and intentionally. And furthermore, I do not and will not accept the liability of the compelled benefit of any unrevealed contract or commercial agreement or bankruptcy. When a person invokes this part of the UCC, they are secretly stating that they do not consent to admiralty law. If the judge tries to dispute them on this, the judge will have to openly admit that the United States is bankrupt. Furthermore, they'll have to say that you're in an international maritime courtroom and place the national debt into evidence, currently over $30 trillion. So much debt. Of course, our foreign creditors are not willing to admit this openly because it would not be politically expedient. There are too many guns in circulation and foreclosure on the United States is practically impossible. By putting the judge in this difficult position, the person's case will be tried in harmony with the common law instead to uphold the ruse. Wait a minute, misinformation, you're saying. Who's saying you can do this? Well, earlier I mentioned a group called the Sovereign Citizens. This group is a part of a broader pseudo-legal movement and contains smaller factions, such as the Freemen on the Land movement. Sovereign citizens distinguish themselves from what they call federal citizens or people who obey the law. Instead, sovereign citizens collectivize themselves around being free from the United States law. This can take the form of rejecting legal currency, refusing to be brought to court and viewing taxation as theft. Whatever. Taxation is theft. Oh, God damn it, mother Yes. Oh. Sovereign citizens can't agree on when it began, but they believe that during its history, the United States ceased to be a government. Instead, foreign powers puppeteer it like a corporation, controlling federal citizens under a contract that they are unaware of. This contract takes the form of licenses, social security numbers, and zip codes. Finally, a conspiracy theory that doesn't think the government uses microchips to track you. They've already got your location, and they don't even need to use the criminal court to catch you. The government cajole your neighbors to turn you in, for the right price, of course. Doesn't sound possible? It happened in Texas. Watch Texas state incentivized snitching to learn more.
Some sovereign citizens include a racial component in their philosophy. Other countries think Americans obsess over race too much. But that's just American exceptionalism. Americans obsess over race better than any other country in the world. White supremacists in the sovereign citizen movement allege that the 14th Amendment, which gave African American citizenship, means that only black Americans must pay taxes and that white Americans deserve more legal rights than them. On the other side, black supremacists believe that they are exempt from federal authority because the Moroccan Moors, from whom they claim to be descended, are actually the original inhabitants of North America. Seems like they got North America and North Africa mixed up. Can we use taxes to fund a geography class for these people? Speaking of taxes, there's one sovereign citizen who went above and beyond his dedication not to paying them. Cattle rancher Cliven Bundy fully subscribes to the sovereign citizen movement. He doesn't recognize federal police, federal taxes, and he believes that he's a member of the sovereign state of Nevada. Is Bundy going to tell the rest of Nevada they've secretly seceded from the United States? Better yet, is he going to tell the United States that Nevada seceded and kept all the nukes buried there? That's a harder conversation than explaining to kids where babies come from. Clive and Bundy felt so strongly about his sovereignty that he let his cattle graze on federal lands for 21 years, arguing that it wasn't constitutional for the government to own so much land. However, the government didn't appreciate Cliven's cattle eating their grass. The United States Bureau of Land Management asked Bundy to pay $1 million in grazing fees, which is probably the most offensive thing you can say to a sovereign citizen. When Bundy didn't pay up, the government decided to confiscate the trespassing cattle. Extremely triggered, Bundy called for sovereign citizens across America to come to his ranch and support his fight against the cattle-stealing federal agents. At first, peaceful protesters joined him with signs, but soon came armed militias surrounding Bundy's ranch and pointing their rifles at the government workers. They demanded that the Bureau of Land Management return the cattle, and the Bureau made a tactical decision that no cows justified dealing with crazy. The cattle were released and to this day Clive and Bundy has still refused to pay the grazing fees. Tensions reached the boiling point earlier this week Get out of here, you after simmering for years in a Nevada turf battle pitting rancher Clive and Bundy against the federal government. We haven't lost this battle. We're just barely begin. But wait, did you really think that was the end of Clive and Bundy's story? Of course not. Bundy was determined to milk his 15 minutes of fame. Unfortunately for Bundy, the media soon discovered that he had effectively turned his ranch into an asylum. With his supporters believing that Obama is a Muslim Kenyan, people born after 1980 have microchips, and that all lawyers have sworn oaths to Great Britain. I hope King Arthur has passed his bar exam. Misinformation wishes you well and says not to pay your taxes because the potholes will magically fix themselves. P.S. Maybe going to war over cows is a little much, but does the media ever spin legal cases to harm everyday citizens? Stella Liebeck spilled just eight ounces of coffee, but she attracted a flood of attention. The jury's awards set off a media frenzy and became a rallying cry for those who believed our legal system had run amok. Until next time, make sure to like our video, subscribe to our channel, and become a truth doula, or you'll be charged under Admiralty Court. I hope you memorized the without prejudice clause.